Maps I think are interesting. The world according to fish. Oh, that is incredible. Enhance, enhance. So we're seeing the world centered around the ocean. So we've got Antarctica in the middle. And then this massive area is the Pacific Ocean. Over here on the right, we've got the Atlantic Ocean. And that kind of shows you how much smaller the Atlantic Ocean is than the Pacific Ocean. And also how much bigger the Indian Ocean is than you normally would assume. And all major rivers are included in this map as well. So the Nile, for example. This is a beautiful map. Well, World map true proportioned continents. More weird map projections. So this is the Makata projection down in the bottom right. This is what you normally see on a world map. But this stretches and shrinks lots of different areas. So this is apparently way more accurate. And you can see how much smaller things like Greenland and the top of Canada look compared to on the Makata projection. Like look at the size of Greenland. It literally takes up so much space. And this also shows us just like the previous map how much of the world is ocean compared to land. This video has been going viral on Twitter about lasting differences between East and West Germany. Yeah, I've seen maps like this before. There are so many different things within Germany that follow historic borders between the East and the West. Look at everything. Trash, childcare, vaccinations, trailers, gender pay gap, graffiti, organs donated. They all follow the same styles. It's crazy. Arab colonialism. So in the year 540, Middle East was basically just where most of the Arabic population was. But these days, in 2022, Arabic people live in basically all of Northern Africa. Quite interesting to see Ethiopia doing its own thing there. I created a map of Europe with cookies. Why is it so good? That is so believably accurate. Oh, I want to put my mouth around it right now. Oh, yeah, look at that. You must have done some delightful little stencils and then you've lined it all up and oh, it's beautiful. You let yourself down on Portugal though, actually, the more I look. There's no tectonic plates there. You're not fooling anyone. US state mottos. I always find it so cute how the US states and even towns and counties have like designated animals and catchphrases and flags. Like we do that nowhere near to the same extent in the UK. California's state motto is Eureka, which means I have found it. Texas's state motto is friendship. Well, that's sweet, isn't it? <laughs> Under gods, the people rule equality before the law, equal rights, industry, all for our country, union, justice, confidence, in God we trust. Generally speaking, rather positive mottos. Whoa, countries that have been under Eureka European control. This is basically showing that everywhere in the world has been in some way influenced by Europe, whether positively or negatively. Green represents land that was colonized or controlled by Europe. That is awful, isn't it? It is so, so much of the world. Very few places that have never been impacted, such as Japan and the Koreas and Myanmar. And then what's that little dinky fella in Africa? Uh, Liberia? Yes, Jack knows things. <laughs> Literal names of countries. Ah, oh, we are getting some incredible maps this video. So, United States of America. America literally just means the United States of America. But Canada apparently translates to the village, which is interesting because it's quite a bit larger than a village. Mexico is in the navel of the moon. Then we've got lots of Caribbean countries. St. Lucia would be land of St. Lucy. Makes sense. Land of the Saviour is El Salvador. Land of many trees, Guatemala. It's really interesting seeing where places got their names. What else have we got? We've got South America. Uruguay meant river of shellfish. So basically what happens a lot of the time is entire countries just get named off what the person that first saw the land saw first. So Chile being essentially the last bit of land to the west translates from where the land ends, which is really interesting. And I know that Venezuela means little Venice because the person that first discovered the land, well, the person that came from Europe and discovered the land, spotted little houses built on the water that reminded him of Venice. Norway means northern way. Sweden, land of the sphere. Finland just means land. That's interesting. Cyprus, Island of Copper. Land of many rabbits, Spain. Did not see that coming. Oh, I could look at those names all day, but we need to move on. Countries the Cold War divided. And I don't really know that much about the Cold War other than like the big things. So I don't actually know why these countries were impacted, but it seems they've made some serious lasting effects. Things like North Korea and South Korea. And then West Germany and East Germany. Obviously, we've seen all of the impacts that have happened there. What are the European countries called? Germany. So the UK called Germany, Germany. Germany calls Germany, Deutschland. Italy calls them Germania. France go with Alemannia. Alemania. Alemania. Germania. 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 Alemania. Nemesnia. Nemexiania. <laughs> Nemesi. Nemeko. Nemiko. Nemetozog. Nemsija. Nishimaka. Nishimaka. Nimaka. Voketia. Vaxia. Saxama. Saxa. Duska. I'm not even going to attempt that one. The world's top selling car brands. Okay, we have Volkswagen in Germany. Hyundai in Spain. 
Berlin. What do you care? I can't actually read it. Nissan. All right, fair enough. Volkswagen in Ireland as well. The Russian one, I don't even recognize. I'm not sure where that is. We've got a lot of Toyota over in this part of Europe. Tesla have Switzerland, which is interesting. And BMW's only appearance is in Belgium. Is your country singular or plural in Polish? That's one of the most difficult things about learning a new language. Having to remember things like plurals and masculine or feminine. Oh, it's a nightmare. I don't know why he went with bananas for this representation, but we can see that generally everywhere in the Polish language is defined as a singular country. But Italy, Germany, Netherlands, Czechia, and oh, where's that? It's Hungary, I've just remembered. They're the only countries that you have to say with a plural, which I don't know Polish, so I don't quite know what that means. What's across the ocean from you? Oh, I haven't seen this map in ages. It's a really good one. I always forget that Canada and the UK are level with each other. It always feels like Canada should be up here and the UK should be a bit further down. But Europe is so much more northern than the Americas when you actually look at this. It's so interesting to look at. Maybe it's just me, but I kind of would have always just assumed that Florida, for example, would be level with kind of Spain, United Kingdom. But Florida's mostly level with Morocco. Also quite interesting to see from the other side that China and Mexico are level with each other. Then with Japan, then we've got Australia level with a big chunk of the middle of South America. Most popular city by country. So all of the green countries in Europe are countries where the capital city is the most populated city. Whereas the three red countries are countries where the capital city is not most populated. So for example, Ankara is the capital of Russia, but Istanbul is the most populated city. The world at 180, this requires an enhance enhance. The quality is too low, I can't read any of the words. But I guess generally it means that these areas aren't really inhabited yet, but that can't be right. Humans have been kicking about for 200,000 years, starting in this area. But these are the only areas that are kind of defined as countries or civilizations at this point in time. Help me date this globe found in my new classroom. Is it a globe if it's not round? It's more of a map on a chest, really, isn't it? Go on then, let's see if myself with my poor knowledge of history can date this. All right, so Yugoslavia in Europe, I think that broke up in like 1991, maybe? Germany, Poland's kicking about. Scotland's not defined, but I'm guessing it existed. Africa's still called French West Africa. We've got some other bits. I don't think it's that old. I am going to say that this is from the 1980s. The middle of 1939. I really know my stuff. <laughs> So Yugoslavia broke up 1992, which is one year out from what I said. But that's basically the only thing I used to date the map, which means it's any point older than 1992. But for some reason, I saw that as it must be around the same time. Oh, whatever. This is interesting. Usual name order in European countries. I did not know this. So most of Europe just has the first name and then that surname, you know, Jack Welsh. But in Hungary, you say the surname and then the first name, like Welsh Jack. In Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, you say the first name, the father's name and the surname. Is that just the norm? In Iceland, it's first name, then father's name? As in father's surname or father's first name? And then does that change if you get married or whatever? Spain, first name plus father's surname plus mother's surname. Well, it's good to see that the mother gets a look in down in Spain. Then Portugal also has mother's surname, but it has it before father's surname. This is crazy. Topography of Indian subcontinent. Whoa, look at that. Very large areas, completely flat in the north. So interesting to see how quickly when the Himalayas turn up, the topography just goes crazy. I guess that's because the land that's now India was originally attached to Africa and it slowly split off and worked its way up here and then smashed into this tectonic plate creating the Himalayas. But yeah, that's really cool to see. Europe's longest flights to each continent. Ah, this is interesting. So we could do a one-way flight 14 hours from London to South America, Chile. You could also go from Turkey to Mexico, from Netherlands to South Africa. That's mad. From Perth to London as well. And then from somewhere north of London, maybe Manchester or something. You could get straight to Singapore. One flight. That's crazy. Most used apps to message each other in 2023. I'm personally a WhatsApp fella these days. Viper. Who uses Viper? Okay, a bunch of the Balkans apparently. Telegram's quite popular over in the east and Messenger actually kind of darting through the middle. Iceland doesn't live there. What's Iceland doing down there? European countries where voting is compulsory. So more or less all of Europe, it isn't compulsory. In Switzerland, compulsory in certain areas and then it is compulsory to vote once you're eligible in Russia, in Greece, Luxembourg, and Belgium. Is it a good thing to have compulsory voting? Because it is annoying in the UK when there's like issues that need sorting out, but then a bunch of people don't turn up to vote. Then at the same time, I'm curious what the impact would be. It's probably better how it is, but you should just really encourage people to vote once they can. But hey, what do I know? Let me know in the comments your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. If you've made it this far in the video and you're not subscribed, you may as well subscribe because you clearly enjoyed the video enough to watch it all the way through. So you'll probably enjoy my other things too. All right, thanks. I'll see you later.